Me voy a ir a eso. Thanks very much, Claire, for that kind introduction. I'm trying to decide whether I'm a self-identified young person or not. <laughs> um, yeah, as, as Claire said, uh, I'm from the Communication Workers' Union. Proud to say that our union supported Jeremy Corbyn in his leadership bid. It was a close thing, actually. It was part of the momentum of the campaign. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Um, also, the CW is an LRC affiliate, as, as Claire has said. And I wanted to take a, just a little bit of time in what I'm saying to talk about unity, I'm not afraid to say it, I know Neil tried to jinx it, because unity is strength, we know that. And the situation we're in now, with the election of Jeremy, with the, with, with the momentum behind his campaign and the expectations, we, those of us who care about socialism in Britain, who are part of what we're loosely called the left, we've actually got to rise to the challenge. What we need is a united, broad-based, democratic, left Labour organisation. We've already heard from Rhea that the the, the, the youth are already yeah, leading the way. The They're leading the way. The youth have already decided they've got to get their act together and actually do something united, something democratic, something broad-based. Um, it's really important, I think, if we're actually going to be supporting the activities of Jeremy and John, that we actually have, we rebuild from the bottom up. It's important that we have reinvigorate the Labour Party, but I'd like to say something a little bit about recognising the federal nature of the party, as well as um, act, encouraging people to be active in their CLP if they wish to join. I think we need to reach out to organised workers in trade unions, community groups, and people who are campaigning in the community. They may, they may be members, they may be supporters, they may be affiliated supporters, they may just be people who are active. But I think if we're going to have a broad-based united movement, we need to reach out. And it's a shame that oh, Matt's here now, actually, because our union, CW, remained affiliated to the Labour Party. It was a bit of a trying time when Peter Manderson was trying to privatise the post office. We kept to it. There were, we had similar debates they had in RMT and FB, and I don't want to comment on other people's unions, but I think we're in a new era now. Uh, unions affiliated, non-affiliated. We're going to be working together. We work together already in the LRC and the TUJTC. And I think we've got to actually, uh, we've got to actually be outward-looking so I would hope that we have a situation where people in whatever, whatever whether unions are affiliated or not affiliated to the party, we can all be comrades together and we can all work together. Um, in local groups, with people who are full members of the party, people who, who just perhaps want to be supporters, or people who just want to help out in the campaigns that we run, we should do that together. Um, we do need a movement. We don't just want uh, uh, to have politics as something that people do, put on a suit, go out there, um, or take a position in the movement. Politics is, is, is actually about uh, being involved. And I think we, we, want, we need to go on the, beyond the politics of New Labour, where quite often uh, all that's actually expected is politics of cheerleading the leader. Um, and uh, having stage armies who actually uh, can, can actually support the leader. We're, we're beyond that. What Jeremy has unleashed in his campaigning is actually people who don't just want to sit there and cheer for him, but also people who want to go out there and do things. And that's what we've got to encourage. That's our responsibility, to encourage that. I think we've also got to be very careful that we want, we want a proper, as I said, a broad-based democratic movement. We don't just want to replicate some of the formulations you get uh, in some popular campaigns where you still get uh, pe people cheerleading, but just for left bureau, of just for left causes, not for right. If, you, if we're serious about being left, if we're serious about being socialist, we actually believe ordinary people can own politics, can own their politics. Yeah. It's not just about supporting the right person, it's about getting paid. Well, I think, I, think, um, I think we can, we can empower people, and I think um, already people are inspired and activated by the campaign. Um, we can act with the principles of democracy and accountability, and we can allow open debate within any broad-based movement. I actually think that people make, people, unity is strength, and I think there's a lot we can be united, there's a lot we can be united on. There's already existing policy. Um, in the LRC, we love to do policy. We have always a policy piece. But I mean, just in the labor movement in general, there are, there are key, there are key issues. There are key issues which we all agree on, and we all know are important. We're not starting from scratch. And I'd just like to finish what I'm saying by picking on a couple of those issues. I think the first one, and it's something that's come out in the Jeremy campaign, is that we need a 21st century argument, a modern argument, for public ownership. Public ownership that's democratic and accountable. <laughs> we, have, 
we want to renationalisation of the rail, absolutely, it's a bloody priority. It's, you know, in Labour Party policy for ages, finally we've got a leadership that actually wants to bloody do it, it's great. But we also want renationalisation of rural mail, read the recent seller. Right. And, and there I say, it, although it is, it is formal TUC policy, to talk about all the other utilities that have been privatised. And it was close to my heart because I'm from the Communication Workers Union and I work for BT and I work in the telecoms industry. The telecom, that was thought of as the most successful privatisation. And what have we got? 20 years down the line, we've got, we've got a liberalisation, rigged competition uh, with current regulatory structure. And what we've got is a rip off of consumers, basically, people not getting what they want. Uh, you know, gonna, um, we've got a race to the bottom in terms of conditions. We've got people working in the telecom industry as agency workers, as subcontractors of subcontractors. We, you know, uh, the, in the telecoms industry, we, you know, union busters are us. Anytime we try to organise a CW in parts of the telecom industry, that a Virgin Media come in or um, Sky come in and they employ uh, union busters to stop us. Um, that's that's the reality, and it's a bit like what Rachel was saying. They they really want to stop us from from extending the union movement out into. Uh, out into the sectors that it's not organised, and that's that, that's got to be a priority for us um, to, to to do that. We've got a situation currently um, in the telecom industry uh, of regulation, which is actually mirrored in all the other utilities too. It's basically um, regulation for the people who own the industry. It's rigged competition, which is a facade behind which mega profits are divided. The spoils are divided by the people at the top. It's such a waste of of it's such a waste of money, our money, that we pay for, our money that we earn. We need to make the case for rational planning, organisation um, and democratic control of industry. Um, as, the, uh, as the old Labour phrase goes, we want industry that serves the people, not enslaves them. Um, our, um, our, our union branch, we produced a pamphlet, it's a, bit, oh, it's a couple of days out, a couple of years out of date actually, we must do a, we must do a, we must do a rewrite in the Union of Electrical Telecoms, the case for public ownership, but we argue that with the massive explosion in technology, we're at a really important time now where we could actually use that technology for the common good, not for, we have super fast broadband that actually serves people. Because we believe that we can actually have social liberation uh, from the ownership of industry. That's how we fight austerity, we argue for an alternative case. We can, we can end the waste of human productive capacity uh, which is wasted on private profit, we can actually liberate our human potential and build a society that meets people's needs and wants, a society in the 21st century. So I think that it's really exciting that Jeremy's putting it out there on the issue of public ownership. All past privatisations are now are under consideration for at least thinking about planning for. Um, and I think that we can be arguing the case for a socialism based on, 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 on our, owning, our owning our own and only in controlling our own economy. It's not that thing out there that controls us. It's something that we as people create and we can control it. So I think that's, that's a really important area where we can all be united. We can all be united on. And I just want to finish on the other area. That maybe is a bit blue skies thinking, thinking about make, making the case for public ownership for whole swathes of, of British industry, but I think it's necessary. But the very immediate challenge that we can all be united on that faces us now is the Tories' pernicious trade union bill. The whole issue, the, the, the case for the repeal of the anti-union laws has been common sense with them amongst the left uh, in the union movement and in the LIC and in the left Labour for a long time. And we, we're now facing, as, as was said earlier, the biggest attack, the biggest attack for 80 years. Um, and we've really got to fight um, the trade union bill. But we need to make, a, again, we need to make a modern case. People understand that the right to strike is really important, but the right to take solidarity action, the right to take political action, all those things were taken away from us. Uh, nor was they were taken away by Thatcher and actually unfortunately kept, kept by a new Labour government. We're in a new era now, we can demand that the Labour Party actually has a new, proper approach to employment rights. I think you saw some of it in the conference floor today. Uh, a new approach to employment rights, a new approach to, to trade union rights, where we can actually extend extend collective bargaining properly, have proper organising rights so more, more people can be involved in trade unions and we can actually, um, we can actually uh, achieve something for working people. So I think, you know, just want to finish on that really. We've got, 
we've, we've got the organisation, we should all be working together and all pulling in the same direction. We've got the policies, there are going to be a few things we disagree on, but on the basic things that really make a difference to people's lives, we're all united. We've just got to bloody go for it. Following Jeremy, following John, we'll go for it.